Hello and welcome back to Fred in the Shed. We are in the Rodeo Shack and on this video we're going to be looking at this new Beofang and this model is the K5 Plus. I'm going to say that this, this one's starting off a little bit odd because I know this is the K5 Plus because that's what they told me it was when they sent it in for review. But there's nothing on the box, it just says portable two-way radio. Nothing on the top and then even on the back it's got some of the features of the radio but again, it doesn't give the model number. So I turn to the little manual booklet, comes with a radio, and it's, um, yeah, it's okay. It's a little bit small, but again, there's no model number printed in the booklet. And even when I went to the very last page, which is where I go straight away, I just wanted the specs on the radio to see what the power output is. Is, is it a 5 watt radio or maybe a 10 watt radio, 8 watt radio? And there's, there's nothing in the book about the power output. And uh, it says in the book there are only two power options. But in actual fact, when you go into the menu on the radio, there are three power options. So it's a bit confusing. I'm going to have to go away and do some research before I get right into this review. Um, but yeah, normally that information is <laughs> readily available. Anyway, let's have a look at it. Before we get into the meat of the review with the specs on the radio and, and programming it and everything, one thing that stood out as soon as this arrived was I instantly recognised the layout of the buttons. Very, very familiar. And it's familiar to any of you that would have bought back in the day a Bofeng UV5R. This was the radio that started these budget priced little 2 meter 70 centimeter radios. Came out about 14 years ago I think now and it wasn't anything remarkable until some uh, clever guy realized that you could jailbreak the radio, you could reprogram it and you could use it for PMR so you would have potentially a 5 watt PMR radio instead of half a watt and then once we realized we could do that especially with chirp and things it just took off globally and I mean hundreds of thousands of these little UV5Rs have been sold it's been cloned many times that's this is a clone radio here on the side so yeah there's no it's very difficult to get the original radio which is a bit of a shame but yeah when I first saw this straight away the keyboard layout you'll see it, it's so familiar it's exactly the same even the lights in the right place there side keys everything screams UV5R so this in my opinion is the natural successor to the UV5R. However, when you look at it, there's some also some very familiar layout and features, the speaker there and the orange knob, and that is the Quanshang radio. What they've done is they've copied the design. This is the Retivest version, but you can see, if you look at the top there, the uh, volume knob, the on-off knob, the little orange knob, it's exactly the same and the design on the speaker grill. So so obviously this Quanshang radio, or this one if you like, this is the must-have radio of uh, perhaps this year and last year and this is the one that's selling like hotcakes and, and they've copied that design but they've kept the original layout of the UV5R. So it's a bit of a hybrid radio. Right, it's a couple of days later. I was a little bit um, rushed before. Taking a time to do a little bit of research on the radio. Things I've learned, um, the battery, for example, didn't say on the battery itself, claims to be 2,500 milliamp hours. So that's a pretty big battery, actually. And I can confirm that it takes just over four hours to fully charge from depleted and I can confirm that because I forgot to turn the radio off and that's one problem with this very I mean it's a very nice little 1.7 um, inch TF, TFT screen and it is very 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 nice to look at but when the radio does go into sleep mode um, there's no little flashing LED or anything around the radio to let you know that it's still on if it's squelched, say, so like now, sometimes you get like a little flashing light. So it, it just sat there and completely knocked the battery out. So that's something that you need to be aware of. Um, very nice to have this this screen. Um, what else have we learned about it? Well, they claim it's a 10 watt radio. And in fact, 
I think there's a, a pro version of this K5. This is the Plus, and I think there's a pro, and they claim that's a 12 watt radio. I, I very much doubt you're going to get that amount of power out of the radio. Um, certainly not if we mod it onto PMR. They always claim a high, high wattage. I did see a couple of videos where this was tested on a power meter, but then you have to bring into question the quality of the power meter. But they'd be getting about six or six and a half watts um, on 70 centimeters. So that's probably about right. And I mean, that's ridiculously powerful anyway for what I want, PMR. And I think the middle setting, they were getting about, about two watts, which is pretty much perfect, I think, for PMR, two watts. It's still illegal, of course. You're only allowed half a watt. But uh, yeah, I think that's fine. Of course, you know, we get the usual comments. I, I get this from the ham cam guys. You're going to sort of say, well, even if, even if it does six watts, is that clean TX power? Is, is it going to have spurious harmonics? And I just don't know, really. I'm, I, I suppose you kind of do get what you pay for in, in that respect. And I did check the price out. And currently, um, this came from Banggood, and it's currently £23.83 pence plus a couple of quid post and packaging so yeah 26 pounds delivered uh, is quite amazing really and yeah you can find fault with anything with say harmonics and whatnot but if i'd have said say 14 years ago when the uv5r came out if we'd, you'd have come up with something like this with a color screen um and said well it's 26 pounds you'd have been you'd have been blown away it's, it's amazing how things have uh, moved on it does have three scan modes, pretty standard now, uh, frequency scan up and down, channel scan, and also it will do the searching out the subcodes as well, so it will do its own scan, which is quite useful if you're going to be pairing this up with another radio and you're going to be using privacy, non-privacy subcodes. I've not programmed this yet, um, I think I could be able, hopefully be able to program it in Chirp, I don't know if this particular model is supported, but generally there, there's one of them that works. Have a quick look round at the buttons. I say very similar to the UV5R layout. You've got all the menu options. Of course this radio is multi-menued. Um, they, all, they all are nowadays. But you do have the uh, option here just to do the shortcut keys. So for example your step rate. Manual. There's, there's your step rate um, going back and then you've got uh, transmit, transmit power high, middle or low. Again quite useful. And there's yeah, certain things like the timeout timer, the key beep, um, voice activated, uh, vox and everything else. So you've got the same kind of thing that you had really got. <laughs> I've just, right, okay, I, I just, I've just noticed something. Looking at the, um, yeah, that's a bit odd. Now I've, now I've seen that, I'm not going to be able to unsee it. Before I tell you what I've just noticed, okay, I'm just about to tell you. Let me know in the comments if you spotted this before I did. Let me uh, zoom in. I was just about to say about the backlight on the keyboard. Let me just zoom in a moment on the, uh, on the keyboard there. Can you see it? Can you see it? You must see it now. Um, yeah, this button here, that's... I'll assume that's supposed to say exit. I'll have to go back and get a picture off the website. It says exit, exit. They spelled it wrong. <laughs> oh, I can't unsee it. It's the, I mean, it doesn't really matter. It's, it's functionality is going to be the same. But how did that? How did that get through um, product testing? How did it do that? Okay. So yeah, it's, it's, it's one of those things, isn't it? Um, like I say, if you spotted that before I did, let me know in the comments. You, I'm sure a lot of you must have spotted that and you probably were screaming at me about that. I just, I didn't notice it. It's, take, it's taken me this long. Okay, right. Let me just um, turn some lights down and let me just show you the backlit keyboard because that's quite a nice little feature. Right. Let's just um, turn the lights down now. Now what I was going to say was how nice that you've got a backlit keyboard very nice very useful for nighttime use the screen is quite bright with the lights down I, I'll assume in the menu system that there's a way you can probably do the backlight you normally can it's very very clear it's a very nice screen actually I mean it, it does it does look very nice um, functionality wise is it any improvement over a basic LCD screen probably not because that would stay on all the time whereas this one will of course shut off you can have it on all the time, but um, that'll have an effect 
on the on the battery, but it does look very nice. I mean, it is eye candy, isn't it, for, what, £26 radio? Another useful feature, you've got a um, preset band button there for the hand bands. It's not really set on anything at the moment. Now, I wonder if it will tune to 446 uh, and transmit without a mod. Let's just, let's just find out. Punch four, it in. Four. Four. Six. Zero. 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 Okay, let's just um, key up now on high power. Huh? Yeah, there you go. So it's not uh, in any way restricted. That's good. So even if I can't get this to program in Chirp, you can go into the menu option now and you can punch those in manually and uh, add them to the uh, memories. I know someone asked on another video, would I show you how to do it? Well, to be honest with you, no. <laughs> um, Frequency mode. Yeah, I mean it's in there, and it? it's in the menu system. I mean, it's, there's so much to um, sh show, so much to show really in the menu. I mean, what we got there? 40, 47 options, 45, 46 options. Um, that's a lot to get through. I wouldn't really want to do that on on a video. Oh, it's that stopwatch. Okay, so it has a stopwatch feature. Um, one thing it has got as well, which I can show you, and it does have a built-in FM radio and if I uh, just press the top button there um. watch out for a uh, copyright strike there with um, for that Fergal Sharky but yeah it's a, I, I did play with that earlier it, it's actually very clear it's oops it, it cuts out again that's the only problem with that screen isn't it it does get a little bit annoying But yeah, good for good for good for the news and things like that. And the, and the radio does have an alarm. If you hold that button down, yeah, quite annoying. But it does have a panic alarm. Um, if anyone ever uses that, let's talk about the quality of the radio, or how it feels. And uh, yeah, I'm I'm sure a Yase or a Kenwood feels better but it's much more expensive. I mean, overall, for what it costs, it's spot on, really. Everything feels really nice and solid. The screen is very, very clear, very, very sharp. Um, the buttons themselves, yeah, precise, very clicky. I suppose if I'm gonna pick any fault with it, and at, what is it, 26 pounds, I'm really sort of shouldn't really, but I guess the Push TT is hard plastic, and it. Yeah, it does feel a little bit cheap. I mean, they've had to save money somewhere. If that had been covered in rubber, I think that would sort of feel a little bit nicer. Again, uh, it's water resistant, really, the radio. The Kenwood socket there, that, that does feel that that goes in quite nice and firm. I think it would be okay in a rain shower. I don't think it's rated at anything waterproof, so it's not something you're going to take in the sea. I think I need to try and program the radio now, so I'm going to try Chirp. Um, obviously, I'm not a radio ham, I'm, I can't use the ham frequencies, so I'm just going to be using this as a non-standard, non-approved, dark side PMR radio. Right, let's get programming. Got the latest version of Chirp on the computer. There's generally a new download every time you open it up. So when you program this radio, you're going to need a standard prolific cable. Um, I've got a Retivis one here, they all seem to be the same, but they do have to have the chip in the USB side of the cable. Um, I know some haven't got that, it, it might work, it might not, but uh, I've always found that the prolific ones work quite well. So just um, plug that into the radio, make sure you get that right in, because sometimes these don't always go in first time. There we go. And then we'll switch the radio on. Nothing to indicate on the screen there. So now we've got the radio connected. Uh, we'll see where it's supported. It probably is. So we go download from radio. Oh, there you go. Look at that. Both fang. And it's, yeah, it's come up. K5 Plus. So it's recognised the radio. And uh, asking me if I want to accept that, which I do. And you go reading straight away from the radio, so there you go. So these are all of the um, frequencies that are stored in the radio. These are 
generally test frequencies around the handbands where the radio is designed to be used. Obviously, we don't need any of those. So just going to click on the top one uh, and then uh, shift, get those collected. I'm just going to delete those. So delete 16 memories. There you go. So that's now cleared the radio. Now, when it comes down to getting the PMR frequencies, um, I have shown you this before. I did make a complete separate video, a very easy chirp guide. If you're not sure how to do that, um, I'll leave a link in the description. Just go away and watch that video and then you'll be up to speed. I promise you I made it really, really easy to understand. So this is the 16 channels uh, PMR that I, I've saved myself. I believe there is actually, some people say that it's set when you go into the menu system in Chirp, there's actually, it's already in there. Um, I can never find it, so I do it myself. So I'm just gonna copy these 16 and copy those and go over to here and paste them in. There we go. So now that's uh, that's in. Just checking that the uh, it's on no FM, which it is. That's absolutely fine. Powers on medium. That that's perfectly fine as well. So now just going to um, upload to the radio. Click OK. OK. And there we go. And then on the radio there, I think you can see if I zoom in a little bit. There we go, back up in the shack. So I've now got the radio set up how I want it. I did program it to 120 megahertz and it's gone straight onto the AM band, which is the aircraft band. So it does have aircraft on the on the radio itself. I'm not sure if that was in the owner's, owner's manual. And also the um, transmit is completely blocked on that band, which is good because you obviously don't want to be transmitting accidentally on that band. On the PMR side, it does um, speak the channel numbers, which is quite nice. 15, 14, 13, 14, 15, 14, 13, 14, 15, 14, 15. I've got my little Retives RA89 here to do the testing. It's got a nice big speaker. I will say that the speaker size on this, uh, this Bofang is a step up on the, uh, the Crane Shang. The Crane Shang has got quite a little I think a tinny speaker. This one does seem to be uh, a little bit more resonant. So when it comes down to scanning, and I've just had to read the manual, and even the manual says it gives an excuse saying it's just a very basic scanner radio. It's got a, sh a few shortcomings when it comes down to scanning. For example, what I want to do now is I want to scan the aircraft band on AM. So there we are, 120 uh, megahertz AM. So it's quite easy to start, start a scan. You just hold down the hash key there. Scanning begin. And then it will scan up and then you can control it on the buttons there. And depending on your step rate will give you the, uh, the, the speed of the scan. But it's got a few shortcomings. Firstly, you can't set a scan range. At least I can't see where you can set a scan range which is a bit annoying for the FM, sorry, the AM aircraft band. And another thing which is going to happen in a second is it, there you go, even when it's scanning, the, the screen just cuts out and goes blank. And there's nothing to show you it's scanning. The LED isn't flashing. And once again, you could just walk off and forget that the radio is scanning and it drains the battery before you know it. So, yeah, it will scan up and it will scan down, but unless you have that screen on all the time, which is also going to have an effect on the battery, it's not really an ideal scanner. It's it's put well in the shade with the uh, the Quangsheng with the e, EG Zoomer software. So yeah, it's it's a basic manual, it's a basic manual scanner. But I think they could have maybe done a little bit better with this and. Uh, it's a shame, really. You, you you can't set a scan range. If you know how to do it, by the way, let me know in the comments because I'm still I'm still learning. Going to do a little bit of transmit testing now. You, you know you know the score. I'm not going for any distance as such. Just going for clarity of receive. I'm going to be using this TID radio as the receive radio. Very similar, actually, to the K K5 Plus in the screen layout. It's got a slightly bigger screen. Um, but uh, yeah, very, very similar 
little um, ham radio that of course we've converted to the dark side naturally neither of these radios are legal to use on PMR so there is that risk factor involved kind of makes it a bit interesting so anyway we're going to walk out with the uh, Bofung and transmit back to the TID so here we go then up on my regular flyover about three quarters of a mile from the QTH so not very far but have put a lot of infrastructure a lot of houses things like that in the way one thing I'm noticing is it's it's a fairly bright day but I'll be honest with you that screen isn't too easy to see that back that black screen uh, in the bright daylight so once again whether that uh, color screen is an advantage over a plain LCD not really sure Okay, you're going to do a transmit test. This is on uh, high power. Yeah, audio test. Yeah, audio test. Audio test, one, two, one, two. High power on the flyover. Audio, one, two, one, two, one, two, audio. Okay, so the same test back to the QTH. Just medium power, which we think is about a couple of watts. Shouldn't have any problem at all. Got audio check one two now. Got audio check one two now. Just medium power, medium power. Audio one two one two three four audio. Time to wrap this video up before it goes on for too long. What I think then of this uh, K5 Plus from Bofang? Yeah, I think it's a nice radio. Um, it's it's really hard to fault it what you get for twenty five pounds. I, th I quite I quite find it quite amusing that they've copied the design there of the Quanshang. That they've really kind of um, honed in on that. But the function buttons, like I say, they're very similar to the old UV five R. I'm not going to directly compare it to the Quanshang, even though they're about the same value, because this radio is ultimately more moddable it's a completely different ball game obviously i can't tell you how this radio performs as a ham radio transceiver it's a two meter 70 centimeter radio there are dozens of these little chinese radios around i know a few of you have said that they suffer from bad harmonics again yeah you might be right at that price level as a dark side pmr radio though um, i think it works really really well yeah it may not be a 10 watt radio but you, you, you certainly don't want to run 10 watts on pmr and on medium power if it, if it is about a two two and a half watt radio that's uh, more than enough that's still five times legal power so you, you certainly got enough power there a couple of things i think as a pmr radio um it could benefit from my, i couldn't see a mic gain in the uh, in the menu system and I always think it's nice if you can turn the mic gain up so you haven't got to chew the radio. But in saying that, the audio sounded absolutely fine. fine. So, uh, yeah, there you go. There it is, the little uh, Bofang. Well, not little, it's a fair size, actually. A reasonably sized uh, Bofang K5 Plus. Um, very good value for money. And, uh, yeah, very nice screen, if you, as long as you don't mind it uh, cutting off. And, of course, you have to live with that uh, rather hilarious spelling mistake exit um yeah you, if you if you've got a little bit of ocd like me you keep getting drawn to it but so you could always tip x over that <laughs> anyway on a serious note so yeah this radio came in um from banggood i haven't checked the prices there banggood are normally got a really really good um good pricing structure and like i say as i'm making this video it's 23 pounds 83 plus about two pound fifty post and packaging so about 26 pounds they're about delivered to the uk take about three weeks for delivery um yeah that's 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 what it is if you're interested and you want to check this out further i'll leave the banggood link in the uh description but i think that's really about it so thank you for tuning in to freddy in the shed i'm a small channel I, I really do appreciate every one of your views there's the old thumbs up that i always give you uh, and as always just hit me a thumbs up down below before you go i like to see that it would really uh, help me out but as for now as always please look after each other stay safe and i'll catch you on the next video cheers guys oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.